Stetzer also on the phone. Good afternoon, everybody. It's nice to be with you today. Today we're going to be talking about our new monthly newsletter service. So we're going to jump right in here and uh, walk through it. So I wanted to start with some background about why email marketing. Some of these stats we've been talking about over the last couple months, but I thought that this would be a good way to start off and just to prime the pump on uh, and why we're, why we're talking about email marketing. So the first and, and probably most important one here is that email marketing still has the most cost effective, is one of the cost, most cost effective forms of digital marketing and that the average ROI on, on every dollar of, of marketing investment is $40. So that's um, extremely high and, a, and a, an important part of your online marketing strategy. Um, more so, you got 90% of people using email every day. There's three times as many email accounts as Twitter and Facebook combined. Email is still the preferred method of communication for 74% of adults, and that 63% of mobile users access their email from those devices at least once per day. So this is still a very big medium in terms of um, an important part of your online marketing strategy. Yeah, and actually, that's a surprising stat, Chad, that it's that cost-effective, because when you think about cost per lead, that's probably for new lead acquisition, most people probably think you know, SEO or PPC, but you're saying email marketing is really up there with the big players. It is. You know, I think every business is a little different depending on the price of your product and how long customers stick around. And, of course, there's uh, volumes and volumes out there on how to calculate the lifetime value of a customer and, and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, this is um, some data I believe we pull, pulled from Marketing Sherpa or Exact Target did a study on this. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it shows that it's up there. And I think even in some of the polls where um, other parties out there that are focused on inbound marketing say which medium has the highest ROI or where do you get the best, you know, the best ROI, um, you know, consistently you see SEO up there, uh, but you also see email. So, you know, these two are, are critically important. And, um, you know, the thing with email, which we'll talk about in a minute, is that you, of course, have to have a list. Um, and so, you know, there's, it's not something like you can start today by going and, and again, we've talked about this, you don't want to just go out and buy a list of 50,000 people and start, start sending out emails because that's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about how to use email in a smart way uh, and buying big lists and sending them out to random email addresses is probably not the best thing to do. Makes sense. So let's talk about, but, you know, so it's a big opportunity, but from what we can see, uh, in our experience working with direct and then also working with um, our partners and, and their clients is that email is underutilized. And again, some of this is directional, but when, we, when I looked across a sample of our accounts, I'd say that less than 10% of, of clients are consistently sending email newsletters. Um, most clients don't have a central list of current and former customers. I know this because as we've started to get more uh, of these monthly newsletter plans in, the amount of time it takes to get a list to send these to has been surprising to me because people are going back and having to pull out old records and type stuff into Excel. So it's just been amazing to me that, you know, whereas here at HubShot, I'm sure many of you guys are all very tech savvy, there's just a bunch of clients out there who this, this kind of information is just not put into a central place. Uh, one of the other things is that, you know, all of our clients, I think, and for a lot of times, spend all their time kind of focused on the next new lead, but they really are dropping the ball when it comes to developing and then converting existing leads. We talked about this um, in our search news newsletter this month and some of the other content that we've um, talked about this month where there's just this big number of like 73% or something of leads that come into businesses are not sales ready, meaning they're not they're not ready to push the button and buy. Uh, they need to be cultivated. And so uh, email is a fantastic way of, of getting leads and, and prospects into a sales-ready state. Uh, and then I think even though I've just said these three points, what's always interesting is that you know, every time um, we talk to customers, they always want to know what else they can be doing to generate more sales. But it's sort of like they just go past email on the next new thing like social or uh, some other new tactic out there that that just is the the, you know, the shiny new object and and what everyone's talking about. So they go there rather than making sure they've really accomplished and and are doing email marketing the way that 
we believe it should be done. That's interesting. So they say, yeah, yeah, email marketing, I get it. Oh, no, really, I want to see how I can make more sales. And you say, well, 73% of people are not sales ready when they first approach you and need to be nurtured, and that's email marketing. They say, yeah, yeah, but what should I need to do? Is that what happens? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I think to that point, I mean, here's kind of why I think this is this is the case, because I think that for a lot of parts, when you, when you talk about email marketing, when we say, are you doing email marketing or sending out a monthly newsletter, the first thing people say is like, yeah, I have a subscription to MailChimp, or I have a subscription to Constant Contact, or I'm using AWeber. But that's not really answering the question. And I think a lot of this is because those companies have done a very good job convincing people that email marketing is a DIY tactic, and you just need their product in order to make it happen. But the reality is that's not the case, right? It's just like we've talked about this a million times. Like, you know, you join a gym, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a bodybuilding uh, champion, right? There's a lot of, of work and effort that goes into it. And so, you know, this is, I think, a, a, as I was reflecting on it and thinking about it today, it's just that I think the, the companies that are in the space, the tool providers, have done a great job convincing people that it's DIY. And the other thing that I think people, the small business owners do, is that even if they have that DIY tool, they overthink what actually needs to go into the monthly newsletter. They all think it has to be new content, something I've never said before. Um, and that if I, if I don't have a special or I don't have some promotion, I can't send a newsletter. And then, of course, you get to the list and it's like, I don't have enough people on my list, I need to buy a list. So these are all obstacles that I think people put in the, in, in the way of actually using this tactic that should be a very big, big part of everyone's online marketing program. So to stretch your analogy, Chad, you're saying that they've convinced us just by signing up for another year at the gym membership, I'll lose weight even though I haven't been physically in the gym in the last 11 months um, is what they're doing. And secondarily, the second roadblock is if I can't bench press 350 pounds, I shouldn't even walk in there. So they, it's sort of like this dichotomy of like I'm somehow going to magically get more fit without putting in the work yet now I'm scared of the work. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Pretty much. It seems like that's the case. So let's talk about how we can help and how you can help your clients. So. I think we should challenge that thinking that Adam, you know, whether it's the gym um, thinking of 350, can't bench press 350, don't go to the gym, or it's, you know, the idea that um, you don't have to have, uh, you know, that you don't, first of all, that you, you can't outsource, right? That it, this isn't necessarily a DIY tactic. Uh, I was on a phone call the other day listening to a webinar, um, more on sort of a business coaching type of webinar, and one of the things that that person was talking about was, going through a list of all the activities that you want to do and identifying the ones that can be easily outsourced, right? These, these are people, these are small business owners who just can't get all the work they need to get done. And so this coach was saying, go through all the activities that you're doing and identify the ones that you really have to do versus the ones that can be outsourced and outsourced for a reasonable cost. So I would say, we didn't, they didn't say it in this call, but I definitely immediately thought, well, email marketing and newsletter um, sending out a monthly newsletter is definitely something that could be outsourced. Now, if you subscribe to the stuff on the previous slide that you know you ha you have to have a massive list and it has to be unique content, you can sort of convince yourself that no, it's something I have to do. But really, it doesn't have to be unique content. And in fact, I would say that a lot of what go should be going into your email marketing, especially a monthly newsletter, is just rehashing what you've already done in those last 30 days. So if you're doing all the right things, like blogging on your website and you're maybe you're involved in some social media in some way you are creating content uh, and, and you and most likely you're following some industry trends so you already have um, just simply by following a few websites maybe having some blogging done on your website you have a pretty good idea of what would need to go into your monthly newsletter so challenge the thinking that it has to be unique I think that for the most part it's just rehashing what you've already done uh, and then the final thing is that you know, the reality back to this idea of what, uh, what new thing can get me more leads or I'm not taking advantage of social or whatever it might be, this tactic, again, when people talk about it, is a, has a very high ROI. And so we would argue that HubShout can help, right? We can actually come in, help you research, write, and send monthly newsletters, and this is how we can help you do it. So what do you need to get started? Well. The first thing is that you need an email template and you need an email list. So an email template, a lot of people may already have one that they've used or, um, 
or or not, but we can help you. It's not necessarily part of our our main hubshot, our main email newsletter um, product, but as a separate service, we can help you build that template. So you get that in place. And and when we've done this with clients so far, we put together and agree on that our monthly newsletter is going to have three main stories, and then on the right hand, the right hand gutter, we want to have some basic contact information and maybe some other links to the blog or some other thing that they might want to do. So we'll help you come up with that, conceptualize that template, and then actually build it and save it into the client's campaign for future for for I'm sorry for future use. The other thing that you need is an email list. And so again, as I said, it's been a little painful, surprisingly painful to see some of these clients come up with their list um, that we're now sending email newsletters out to, but once we get through it, we build the list, and then we come up with some maintenance program where either on a monthly basis, they send us new, new, new customers, or ideally, we give them access to the screens. They can log in, and it, as we've seen in prior webinars, it's very simple to go to the email tab, go to list, go into your list, and add um, email addresses right into the screen. So that's not very hard. Once that's all done, the, the only other thing you really need to get going with your your monthly newsletter is is completing the is completing the newsletter brief, and so this is really just the instructions. Like we have writer instructions and and pretty much any of the other programs. Um, like for example, with pay per click, we have we have these questionnaires we develop, which give our analyst team and our writing team enough information to actually go and do the work that you want us to do. So tell us who the audience is, um, and and then basically. One of the things that's very helpful if you don't, for example, just want to promote things that are on your website, um, but give us some some sources that, that have good month good news. I know, for example, with our search news newsletter that we send out on everyone's behalf, we use a lot of the you know the primary internet marketing blogs, things like Search Engine um, uh, Land and other uh, sites out there that sort of are the ones who aggregate all the information together. We go through, look at those stories and pick the three or four that we think are most relevant in that month, and then we kind of rewrite it or rehash it depending on what we're trying to do. And um, in addition, of course, to the industry, industry news, uh, it's always great when you have blog posts that you're writing on your client, your website, your client's website, that we can actually take and, and put into the newsletter, because that's a great way to get traffic back to the website, uh, and that's a pretty important uh, part of this. I've got a couple questions for each other that came up on this slide. One is, can you review the costs of sending emails? I think I heard it was ten cents per thousand emails, but that seems too low. <laughs> that's that's a great question. It is ten cents per thousand emails. Um, we basically uh, so Hubshot has built a software that allows you to build templates, um, build and manage lists, and then uh, using campaigns actually put those lists and templates together to send out to a, at a given time to a certain group of people. When they actually are sent out, we're using Amazon SES, which is part of the Amazon cloud services. And, what, and one of the reasons we selected it is because it was just a phenomenal deal, we thought, for um, our resellers and their clients was to be able to use you know, a leading, an industry-leading service like Amazon's web services to send the emails, and then the rate was just phenomenally good. It was ten cents per thousand. We said, "Great, let's let's uh, focus on that as our way of our delivery platform." Right, and we selected not to mark that up because we want to encourage people to use this valuable channel. Here's the next question: So, can we create our own templates or borrow previous ones and save them to each unique client in your dashboard, as well as have global templates that all clients can use? My concern is I don't want everyone to see email templates from specific clients, and I'm confused on how this works in your software. Yeah, so each campaign, uh, and I, uh, each campaign has its own um, set of templates, and there is a universal template library that everyone can go to to pick from, um, and then you can take one from the universal library, bring it down into the client's campaign. So this is not. This is below the reseller, so there, our hierarchy is that there's a reseller parent account, and then there's a um, your what we call a reseller child account, and then their account has multiple campaigns on it. So email templates exist in the reseller child campaigns. Uh, so if you have if you build a template for one of your clients, 
and then build a template for another client and they're saved in different campaigns. Using our security feature, you can have users, um, the, the users will only see the accounts that they are given access to, uh, given access to. So you can definitely, you know, keep that separate. Um, and then what we do is when we do come up with a custom template for that, and usually again with this is what happens with an email newsletter is we spend that time to sort of agree on we're going to have three stories in here and it's going to look a little it's going to look like this. We have your logo at the top. On the right hand side, we're going to have a picture of the owner and maybe a blurb about how to contact below that. And then the primary stories are going to be in sort of a column to the left that's the majority of the width of the screen. So that what we would usually do is save that and call it you know newsletter template master. Okay, and then every month you can go grab that, make a new copy of it, and I would take that, and I would, for December, I would take the, the newsletter master template, make a copy of it, call it the January, the December newsletter, put my content in there, and then send it out, and then for January, I'd go back to the, temp, the master, make another copy, and go forward. So you can, you can definitely accomplish what is being asked. Great, thanks. Uh, here's the next one. Often email lists are very out of date and full of partial information. When I talk to my clients, what's the best way to help a client with this struggle? That yeah, that's a great question. Uh, well, I think first of all, one of the things that we're that our software does is it will identify uh, the the bounces, so you can then sort and filter on anyone in the list who's bouncing, which would be a pretty good indicator that the email address is no longer being used or is incorrect. So that could certainly be a good way for uh, you to provide feedback. Either well, the client could either get it themselves by logging in and looking at the screen, or you could provide that feedback to them, and then they could, if they really wanted a clean list, could go try to clean up that by removing the the ones that are bouncing and going back through their files and trying to find a new address for that for that person. Um, I think that's probably the the best way to do it. I mean, there, it's relatively easy, as I said, to import new lists. We search for dupes, and uh, we won't add a name a second time. So, for example, if you wanted to take your whole list and add it every month, technically we would look at that list and only add entries that we didn't have data for. So that might be another way to, to play with it. And Adam, I don't know if you have any ideas on good ways to help manage lists like that. Well, I think the root of the problem is probably more commitment to the program. So if you're finding the list is ugly, partial information, they're not updating it with new customers on their customer list or prospects from their sales funnel or they're not dropping people off as customers leave, it means they don't have good discipline around this. And as the marketing consultant, particularly the small business marketing consultants that you are, uh, you need to present some of the same data that Chad has shown you and say, what are you doing? Um, this is one of the highest ROI channels. And three out of four of the prospects who approach you are not sales ready yet and need to be nurtured. And the only way we're going to accomplish that in a cost-effective manner is by using these very excellent email tools that are in front of you that are very cheap. But you've got to be bought into this. So I think the data is where you start and you get that mindset and then you beat them up a little bit. I mean, that's, that's what a good consultant does in a friendly way. Just like you know, when you go to the gym to you know, use the same analogy, I'm going to tell you, just 10 more reps. No, I know it hurts, but you've got to do it. It's for your own good eat your broccoli. So I think I would come at it from the motivational side and recognize your role in that process and try to whip them into shape. And then, you know, they'll resist because they don't know how to do it. And that's when you start showing them all the things Chad said, the best practices, how to use the technology and not be afraid of this. And as soon as they get a lead or two or I mean, a deal or two out of that, I think you'll have them. Um, that's my two cents in that. And the last question for you here, uh, Chad, goes back to pricing. Uh, this person wanted to know, does your system charge at the end of the month each month based on all emails that were sent per campaign or per campaign as they go, more like campaign monitor does? Great question. And so, again, because we're, we're integrating in with Amazon, in order to use the email marketing features, you actually go and subscribe and sign up with Amazon and you get a, a special key that you then plug in to HubShout. So, we basically just, when we're ready to send a campaign, go get your key that you've entered on, on the HubShout side. We verified. We, we can talk back and forth to make sure it's active. Um, and we say, go send these emails. Here's the key. And, and bill the customer. 
And so really, you'll, all your billing um, happens with Amazon. And I honestly, off the top of my head, I, I can't remember. Adam, do you, if they, do they bill, so I think there's like a threshold, right? Like you, they bill you every um, so many dollars. Do you, do you remember how that works on the Amazon side? I think that's true, and we send a lot of emails, tens of thousands, but honestly, at this 10 cents per, you know, thousand, the bill is so small. It, our bill is you know, never more than $10, so I don't really care. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's so yeah. painfully cheap. Uh, the other question that came in here is that more around the server configuration. What is your mail server configuration like? Are large lists sent in batches or all at once? What are the tra tracking cap capabilities such as clicks and opens and how accurate? And those are very good questions, and then some of those are tied to the policy that comes along with your Amazon key, because as Chad said, you are uh, directly contracting with them for that service, and then you're sharing the key with us, which you're permitted to do. So your key has certain limits on how many can send in any given 24-hour period, and I forget what those start at, Chad, you might remember, and then they grow as you show that your list is what they consider, quote, a white list, and it grows fairly rapidly up to some fairly large amounts. We've configured our software to respect those limits, so early on when it can't send maybe as many as you have on your list, it's going to send as many as they can that day, and the system's going to hold the rest for delivery the next morning. Uh, and then I guess the second part of this question, Chad, for you is what can I see in terms of clicks, opens, and other tracking capabilities? Yeah, great. So the, so some of that data, uh, we have a, I'd say um, we have all the, the stats you need. Um, the, the best way, so if you think about um, the, the stats in terms of deliveries, we, we're showing how many were sent. Um, we do get, we get data back from Amazon on how many bounced. So we have sent, we have bounced. Um, what we do is when we're putting together that, that email and sending it over to Amazon to go out, we actually do put a tracking pixel in the email, um, which when someone opens it on the other side is key to that user. So we can tell you specifically which users open the email. Uh, so we track opens and it's at a, a user level, so at a, or at an email address level, not a user level, email address level. Um, and then we, um, I'm trying to think if there's any other core stats that we show. I think those are the main stats that most people want to look at. So then we calculate obviously some open rates and things like that and bounce rates uh, using the stats I just mentioned, sends and opens and, and bounces. So those are the stats that we, we pull together. Some of them, we're getting data back from Amazon. Um, other data, we're actually, have built, um, you know, essentially an analytics tool that can uh, put a tracking pixel in the emails and watch them open up and, and keep track of that. And the last one here, and I'll let you move on to the, the next slide here, Chad, is how much is this service, and do we have to manage this all for our clients, or do you do this for us? Great. So there, you know, we have a tool just like you know you can go to MailChimp or other email marketing platforms um, the the tool is bundled in with our reporting software which is typically is is a part of any ongoing campaign with HubShout so you, you know anyone who's on an SEO campaign or paid search campaign or social whatever it might be is going to get our full suite of reporting services which includes email marketing now we also do have reporting only packages where you can just buy the software and again when you buy the software you also get the email marketing. Now that's that's the software side of it. What we're talking about today and actually I'll just go ahead and jump forward to the next slide. This actual us every month writing a newsletter on behalf of you for your client, this is an ongoing service um, that we provide and this product is $249 a month and what we do with this is and it's a good segue into the next question here, which is, you know, how does this work? Well, every month, just like we do with SEO and pay-per-click, our system you know, looks at your anniversary date and, and basically says, okay, it's time to write another uh, newsletter. Um, and so it will assign a few tasks out to different people at the company. The first one will be, we need to do some research on what we're going to be writing about this month. So it's the research newsletter task. And this is going to go to our research team, not term, but our research team, uh, who will then um, take a look at the brief that's been written. So gives us some ideas of what sources you want to be using. And, um, and they'll put together some headlines and some facts that we want to include in the newsletter. And then that goes on over to the writing team. And the writing team then takes those, those headlines and those stats 
and puts together the actual content, which is then which is then basically sent to you or to your client, depending on how you've configured the system, for their approval. Any feedback that comes back, again, is directly entered into the system. We've got a, a task screen that allows either you or the, the end client directly to provide feedback and route it back to the writer for them to make any tweaks that are needed. And once that's approved, it goes on to our, our analyst team, who then takes that content, takes the newsletter template that we've already defined going into this, and puts the content in, puts some nice pictures that are relevant coming out of our photo um, you know, or out of our, um, our, our service that provides um, uh, photos, and then uh, is going to send that out to the customers in the list that's been provided. So that's um, really the flow through, and that service, that part of us actually doing the work of researching, writing, and then sending the newsletter is $249 a month. Right, so we've tried to configure this so that there's many different ways you can utilize it. If you want to be doing that work and that's part of your marketing consultancy and you know this business and can create great content, awesome. You can use our platform at a very, very low cost, practically free if you have other services running, $40 a month if you're in the reporting only. Uh, but then you can also graduate up to outsourcing more of that human labor part, which is our research team, our writing team, and our analyst team pulling this off, which does get significantly more expensive because, as you know, there's time to do uh, to get all this work done, but to make sure it gets done, and of course you can mark that up as well. Perfect. Let's see here. So a few other benefits. I, I really wanted to circle back and, and talk about how email marketing is a very integral part of the broader content marketing um, concept that, that, you know, an inbound marketing for that matter that everyone is, is talking about and trying to build into their marketing uh, at companies today. So, you know, some of the core parts are SEO, on-site blogging, um, social media, and then I believe you know, real email marketing, newsletter uh, going out, autoresponders, these are really the core parts of, of content marketing. I think the other benefit that you get is uh, one of the things we're doing is because our, our research team is having to really stay is, is basically every month writing the new headlines for the newsletter. We are going to be feeding more editorial and facts back into the into the SEO campaign if you're running one. So you know it's just a side benefit that uh, there's there's essentially another set of hours of our research team on this that also are going to be used for other um, activities that we're that we're doing on the campaign. So that's a sort of a side benefit. And then I think one of the things that we've talked about for a long time as we you know, we have a lot of people come in looking for SEO, but we really talk about the benefits of, of having a multi you know, sort of prong strategy with your clients. This is another great tactic to be able, when you have your monthly meeting with your client, to be able to go in and talk about not just what are the rankings with SEO and the traffic, you know, that traffic that's coming from that is important stuff. You want to do that, but you also want to be able to say, and here are other things that are happening in your marketing campaign because the more the more you're sort of there. Um, you're helping them across their entire online marketing uh, strategy. The, the we believe the longer you'll be around. At least that's been our experience. Is that the the people where we have a, a bigger seat at the table, the retention just goes way up when you have that opportunity. So this is another great one that we think everyone out there should be pushing with their clients, especially given the stats on this. Right? I mean, you know, one of the ones that is, is, is tricky is we keep you know it's like what is the return on investment with across lots of different marketing tactics, well, this one's a no-brainer because it's really high, and if they're not doing it, it just seems like an easy way to get your foot in the door and say, let's focus on this and get it done. And I've got a number of questions about the pricing, and it's a good discussion to have here, Chad. One of them, there seems to be some confusion in saying, is it 249 and that's as many newsletters as I have clients? And I, and I just want to clarify, this is per client, and the reason for that is we're doing custom research for that client and writing a custom newsletter that will only be used for that client. Um, and to that, some people have said, well, that seems pretty expensive. Why wouldn't I just put that into SEO? And so I'd like to hear your comments on that, Chip. Well, I think that, again, to me, it goes back to the role you're playing with any of your, of your clients. Some people come to their clients as the marketing consultant, and they're trying to figure out what is the right strategy across the board. Um, other people come to clients where um, they're just doing SEO. So uh, uh, to me, this is this is more of saying like 
looking at their entire marketing budget, if, if it makes sense for them to put that into SEO, then put it into SEO. But I think this is what I'm saying here is this is a opportunity that I think a lot of people, it's really an opportunity for expansion. I mean, it's an opportunity right. to spend to say, look, you're, you're leaving opportunity on the table. So that's going to cost you a little bit more money to go get that opportunity, but we think it makes sense. So I wouldn't say everyone go cut their SEO budget in half or whatever to, to fund newsletter. This is really saying there's, there's more opportunity out there and you would need to, in my opinion, be able to talk to your, your uh, client and say, here's something you're leaving on the table. Let's, let's help you get there. Right, and lean back on those stats. I, I agree with you 100%. I think you know, SEO is up and running. We're three or four months in. I'm seeing the rankings move, but I haven't hit page one yet. But I, I have confidence. It's confidence is working, of course, every patient or every client's a patient. You say, look, you got to let that work, and that's a long-term strategy. There's tons of data showing you'll be glad you let that run. In the meantime, you have people coming at you, and the stats show probably only one in four is ready to buy at best. Here's how we could get more return on investment on that traffic flow. Let's start up this, this newsletter to nurture them along. And by the way, as SEO starts to kick in, we'll have worked out all the kinks in that newsletter process, and it'll be there like a net to catch more of that traffic when it does come. So I agree. This is all about upsell and expansion and helping them gain confidence that you know what you're doing as their, as their marketing coach. Here's another interesting one that came in, uh, Chad, that we should address. Just for clarification, are you saying it's now $249 for the search newsletter that you send out to our clients, or are you talking about something different here? Yeah, that's that's a great question. So, and Adam, I just want to double before we hit hit that. Like, I agree with you 100% that this actually will down the road actually probably this will help make the return on investment of SEO go up, right? Because you're what you're going to see, and I just wrote a a blog post on this. Um, what you're going to see is that without really changing your traffic a whole lot, so just take traffic out of the equation for a minute. This is going to help you actually sell more because it's going to catch the people who. You know, when they called in, you no one picked the phone up, and so they just filter off somewhere else. Or it's going to catch the person who wasn't ready to buy initially, but later on was. So it's really it's really an important part of I think of getting the the whole funnel. It's like it's definitely lower in the funnel, but it's very important. Now um, the other question. So search news, yeah, that's that still is um, part of the program, the reseller program. And so I think to answer that question as well as the other one, let's just you know, make sure everyone's on the same page here. We're suggesting that the email marketing newsletter that we're writing is relevant to the client's category. So some of you might be asking the question about them of like, can I pay once and have it used for all my clients? That may work if you're, um, if you're, you're focused on one industry, right? Like you only deal with lawyers. Could you have us write a newsletter at your for a new a, a legal newsletter, a legal updates newsletter um, that was written once that you sort of took and cut and paste into other campaigns, that's something that could probably be done. Now, obviously, there's work to go cut and paste into lots and lots of campaigns that would not be part of that product, but that might make sense. Um, what we're talking about here, though, with the 249 a month, is actually creating content unique to the category that that that, that client is in. So, if you're a local guy who has 15 different clients in the Orlando, Florida area, plumbers and HVAC guys and accountants, we're not going to create one newsletter that we send to all those three or four people. We're going to create an accountant newsletter. We're going to create a plumbing newsletter. We're going to create a HVAC newsletter um, that would, or things that are relevant to, the, to those types of people and then send that out. So in the HVAC case, hey, change your filter every 30 days. Plumbing case, like, you know, it's, it's winter time. Make sure you cycle your all of your um, your fixtures to make sure that the shutoff valves work, whatever it is. I mean, that's the kind of stuff we're going to be doing. So that is unique to the client who's paying for it, and not something that can just be done and and you know spread all over the place. But the search news we do on SEO, it will continue to be something we send out to your clients, and we are now putting that in the reseller template library so that you can then send it out to your prospects as well. Right, good. Search news is still free, so thank yep. you. Uh, here's here's a couple, another one for you. Uh, just first of all, a comment from someone who said "ha" and laughed at us earlier. I spend well over two hundred fifty dollars a month to have my staff research and develop a newsletter each month. I think two hundred forty nine for a well researched, well crafted email delivered and tracked using professional software such as this. 
is a real cheap deal. And I appreciate uh, that input because we've done some benchmarking as well. And I think in the world of MailChimp and do-it-yourself, go back to the beginning of the webinar, this can seem expensive, but the reality is once you get a consultant involved to do things, usually it's way more expensive than this. And I happen to agree with this person. The other one I wanted to ask you to respond to, Chad, was can you guys touch on, again, you just did it, but repeat the ROI to justify the service. I'm following along. It sounds good, but I think I need to understand the pitch a little better to someone who may have SEO or PPC. How do I justify the ROI of the extra 249? Okay. So uh, there's two places to justify, two ways to, to think about it. Um, it really comes back to the audiences. So <clears throat> you're going to have prospects to your website who uh, are not ready to buy. And, the, and we, the number that we had from um, Marketing Sherpa, our, our B2B publication, was that that's around 72%. So what you're, what you're doing is ultimately that should be the sales guy's job or the owner of the business's job to nurture that person through their indecision and getting them from interested in the service to actually buying the service or product. Email marketing is a great way to provide air cover to help do that. Everyone's busy, they're chasing stuff down, they're operating, they're selling, and, and so email marketing is a great way to convert more of the existing traffic that comes to your website into sales. The second place that it's very useful is that it's a great way, and depends on the business you're in, so you have to sort of fit this to the category, but it's a great way to either go to existing and, or previous customers and sell them something else. So notify them, and it doesn't have to be a direct sale, right? That, that email that goes out doesn't have to be like, we now call us and there's a special $49 a month. What, what ends up happening that we see a lot is we send an email out about um, a new trend or a new opportunity with email marketing or with you know, even uh, you know, social media or whatever it might be, and someone said, I've been, think, I've been meaning to, to inquire about social media, so I've got this email in front of me. I have five minutes. I'm going to actually pick up the phone and call. So that now is somebody who was a current customer or previous customer who's calling you back for more services. And then I think the final thing that it does is just by getting that impression of your business in that person's inbox, it's going to help you help that business generate referrals. So in the scenario where you know, you've sent out your monthly newsletter, I may not even open it, but I see in my inbox that I've got um, XYZ search marketing companies monthly newsletter sitting in my inbox. I then go to lunch with a buddy and he says, um, I'm thinking of, I need to get into this online marketing stuff. You've got an impression, there's a chance that that person will now say, oh, you, you know, you should call XYZ marketing company. They're, they really know what they're doing and I've used them before. So those I think are the, if you take that all together and you, and you look at what the return on investment of that is, that goes back to that first slide, which is it's up there with SEO, and depending again on the probably sale price of your product, it could be you know in the, in the stats we had, so every dollar you put into to SEO, it's as high as forty dollars in return on that. So, you know that would mean for two forty nine you need to sell a nine thousand dollar product. I'm not sure everyone uh, necessarily has is at that price point, but lifetime value of a customer, the referral potential, all the other things, maybe it is that high. And you have to kind of work through that for each customer, but that's the that's the sale, that's the opportunity. Excellent. Yeah, and, and to put my professor hat on for a second, I mean the consumer behavior behind what's happening here is very very well documented. It's this repeated exposure phenomenon that's driving exactly what Jess is talking about, which is why we all get so many emails from Amazon and Apple once they've acquired our email address because they understand that um, and they put this stuff in front of us because they know ultimately. It just gets a little mind share, reminds us to click over, oh, I was going to buy that thing from iTunes, or I was going to buy that Christmas gift from Amazon. Oh, now it's in front of me, might as well take care of that. Uh, here's another question for you. How much content is included in the average newsletter with this package? Right, so we're, we're targeting around three to four stories per newsletter, and that depends on you know the, how complicated the stories are and, and a few other factors, but it's somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four and also depends on whether we're writing just intro blog entries to blogs that are already on your website or whether we're kind of writing more feature length um, stories. But that's the target range, three to four.
Okay, excellent. And there was one other question here. Uh, can we do a combo of self-service and full service where we might have you generate the first newsletter and then use it repeatedly for others? Um, yeah, so uh, that, uh, I, I think Adam said for other sites, um, I, the, you know, I mean, the, basically, we're always... Sorry, segments, you said, other, other segments. Oh, other segments, sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I think that one would be a little tough. I mean, you have to obviously, we'd have to probably dig into that one offline and, and talk to your account manager and see what the scenario are, is. I mean, obviously, if you can think of a way to make, if you deal with just home services, and you wanted to basically, um, you know, create one newsletter that was that handled um, you know, that kind of, you know, like I said, touched on some HVAC component, one plumbing component, and something else. Yeah, maybe there's a way we can actually write that content. Um, we don't currently have a plan that says, okay, now take that and spread it across 20 accounts. But give us a call. We'll see if there's some way that we can come up with that. Or maybe what you're saying is you would then take that and go copy and paste it in all the campaigns and send it out on the client's behalf. So give us the specs. We can, we can see if we can work with it. Great. Well, I think that's um, all we have. So uh, this was a great discussion. I'm glad we had so many questions. And it's definitely something that I think is a, a product that uh, we'd love to talk to you more about. Your account managers uh, have this information. So feel free to give them a call. And uh, we look forward to any questions on this. We'll post this in the forum as usual. And uh, any questions that you have, let's continue the discussion there. So have a great day and talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody.